in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's rise up together as we make our declaration of fruitfulness in this year of fruitfulness. Are you ready? Say with me, the eternal God is our refuge. He opens rivers in desolate heights. The Lord makes the wilderness a pool of water. The Lord God is my sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. Therefore, I delight myself in him. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall be fresh and flourishing. Though the earth be shaking, the name of the Lord is my strong tower. By faith, I affirm that in Christ alone is my salvation. In him I live and move and have my being. It is written, the righteous are like a tree planted by the waters bearing fruits in its season. So I boldly declare, as for me, my God has made me exceedingly fruitful. In this season, my spirit bears fruits of righteousness. My talents make way for me. With my hands, I will plant, I will build, I will harvest day by day, step by step. In Jesus' name, Amen! And give God praise somebody and you may be seated in the presence of God. And it's a joy to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. I trust that you've had a fruitful week and that you're walking in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe that when God sets us on his path, he always brings us victoriously to the conclusion. And what God has begun to do in your life, you perfect it in your life. And nothing will cut short the expectation of the righteous in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to do a two-part message uh, this week and next week. And I've titled my message, A Place to be Fruitful. A Place to be Fruitful. For us to be fruitful in our endeavors, we need to operate in the right atmosphere and in the right place. Because there are places that can limit our fruitfulness. In the parable of the sower, Jesus Christ showed us that the place we are planted can determine whether we become fruitful or not. Uh, because the seed that fell by the wayside and the seed that fell on stony ground and thorn among thorns did not produce fruit. So the place we find ourselves or the place we are planted is important for our fruitfulness. And uh, today we're going to look at an Old Testament story. Uh, and the story is about Isaac and this story illustrates the point about the place of fruitfulness. Now, it's important before I read the uh, scripture to note that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all those people in the Bible that we read about lived in the part of the world that today we call the Middle East. And the geography of that part of the world, the Middle East, is very different from where we live. We live in the tropics. And in the tropics, rainfall is very normal. But in the Middle East, uh, it is more dry most of the time. Um, and so rain is very, very scarce. It was so in the days of Abraham, and it is so now in much of the Middle East. And that is why when you read the Bible, you find that my, many of God's promises to Israel uh, refer to water, provided water. Uh, when even God said that he was going to open the heavens, it meant that he was going to give them rain. Uh, he spoke about the righteous man uh, who is planted by the rivers of water. So water and provision of water is very central to God's grace under the Old Testament because of the geography 
of the place where the people lived. The story we are about to consider uh, is recorded in Genesis chapter 26 and it talks about Isaac living in the land of the Philistines, a land that is called Gera. And uh, Isaac moved to Gera because there was drought where he lived and that was a very normal practice in those days uh, when it didn't rain in your area you go to another area or when the wells dry in your part of the world you go to another place where you can find uh, water so that's what Isaac is doing he's moved uh, to the land of Gera now it's in- interesting also to note that 90 years before Isaac moved to the land of Gera his father Abraham had also gone to the same land of Gera to build wells. So this cycle of drought and looking for water was not new to Isaac. Abraham had gone through the same situation. So Isaac went to Gera looking for water. And the reading I'm going to focus on is from verse 18 to verse number 22. And he reads, And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father Abraham had called them. Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But a headsman of Gera quarreled with Isaac's headsman, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Essek, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. When Isaac went to Gera, he went searching for the wells that Abraham had dug 90 years before. Wells that had provided water for his father Abraham. Then he realized that the Philistines had stopped those wells and and those wells were not uh, producing water. He dug those wells again. But there is no report that he found water from those wells. So that which had produced water in the days of Abraham was not producing water in the days of Isaac. Sometimes something that worked in another season may not work in another season. Something that worked for somebody may not work for you. It provided water for Abraham and for Isaac he dug But there was no water. So Isaac moved from there. And verse 7 says that Isaac's servants moved further down the valley and started digging. This was not Abraham's wells. These were new wells that Isaac was digging. He moved further from where Abraham's wells had been and went to the valley and started digging. This time, Isaac's servants found water. And you can imagine how they might have felt when they found water. Water is so scarce. It was more precious than oil. Of course, there was no crude oil at that time. But it was so scarce. It was so important. And they dug and there was a gush of water. And they were so excited. But that's when opposition arose. So Isaac faced opposition. And uh, with his first water, uh, and so he called the first well Isaac. And the word Isaac means to fight or struggle. 
It is a word that is used to describe those who fight over what you have and struggle with you over it. They can't stand it when you find water. And Isaac was a stranger in the land of Gerah. That was not his natural place of abode. Uh, he wasn't a citizen there. This is Philistine land. And if you know much about the Bible, the Philistines and the Hebrews were always having conflict. So this is more or less in enemy territory. And so the people came and fought over him with it. They knew the king. They, they had connections. And when they rose against Isaac, Isaac was no match for them. So Isaac lost this fight. He lost it and he called the well struggle or, or fight. But you know, Isaac was not discouraged. He moved further and dug another well and he lost the second well too. And so he called the name of the second well Sitna. Sitna means to lie in wait to attack. These people were lying in wait. They were waiting for him to find water and they pounced on him and attacked him. It's very interesting that the root word for Sitna is the same root word for Satan. In Hebrew, the same root word. And it means an adversary, an opponent, or somebody who opposes you. And that is the meaning of Satan, an adversary. So we can say then that this was a satanic attack. They waited for Isaac to do all the hard work and then they pounced on him, took his well from him. So if you were Isaac, by this time you're beginning to see a pattern emerge. That you work hard, you dig hard, there is water, people fight over it, and you lose it. Then you dig again, and there is water, and people fight over it, and you lose it. And the source of it is a satanic attack. It, it would seem as if Satan has a plan to frustrate your success. And he inspires people to contend with you over the things that God opens for you. So, so far, Isaac is not making success. He's working hard, but there's nothing to show for it. He's digging, he's finding water, but he can't hold on to the water. But he's not discouraged, and Isaac moves further and starts digging again. And the Bible says he moves further, and my own uh, imagination would tell me that he moved to a place that probably was was very dangerous for the Philistines to follow. That means that he moved deeper into the valley, further down to a virgin territory, and he dug for water, and this time he found water, he found a breakthrough. And when Isaac dug for the water, uh, the place had no name. It's just a no-name place that he goes to dig for water uh, and he gets the water. And he waited for Philistines to come, but no one came. Nobody popped up. Nobody fought over him with it. So probably he waited a day uh, and, and expected that there would be an attack and there was no attack. And waited for a week and there was no attack. And waited for a month and there was no attack. So he finally concluded this one is different. This is not like the two other wells. This one is different. So he called the name of the place Rehoboth. In Hebrew, it is Rehovot. And Rehoboth means a wide and open place. A wide and open place. It's a very powerful word. A wide and open place. No enemies around. No contention. No struggle. 
God has given us a wide and open place because Isaac says the Lord has made room for us. That word that is translated as Rehoboth uh, in the in the in the Old Testament doesn't only occur in this passage; it occurs in several other passages in the Bible. And uh, in you don't need to open to it. In Genesis chapter nineteen, verse two, there is a story there where uh, when the two angels went to Sodom to destroy it, and when they went. Uh, Lot was sitting at the gate of the of Sodom, and he saw these two angels. They looked like human beings, and he said, "Come, come and abide with me." And the two angels said, "No, we will not come in. We will dwell in the open spaces." And if you read Genesis nineteen two, it's the word is open spaces. The word open spaces is Rehoboth. Uh, so. Rehoboth means an open space. When God told Abraham to walk the land, the length and the breadth of it, the word that is translated, the breadth is the same word that is translated Rehoboth. So Rehoboth is a word that means an open space, a place that has width. It is wide. It doesn't have limitations. Usually in the Bible, that word is used to describe an open square. And many times in the, in the Old Testament, that word is used to describe uh, a place that is open, a place that has no limitations. It is also used to describe a street, a place of access. So when God gives you a Rehoboth or when God gives you, uh, makes room for you, it is as if he has made a way for you. He has opened a path for you. A street takes you from one place to the other. It connects you from one point to the other. So Rehoboth is when God makes a way for you and gives you access. So what Isaac is saying, now God has given me access. God has made a way for me. It is similar to when God makes a way for you and links you to the right person. Or God gives you access to something desirable. The word Rehoboth means a street, a pathway, God's way. Secondly, Rehoboth also means a plaza. A plaza is an open square. It's a place of opportunity. It's a marketplace. It's a market square. In in the Old Testament, and and we we find that even in much of the modern world, uh, you go to a town and there will always be the open square, the market square. This is where people gather. If you go to our villages, there's always the open square. This is where debas are held. The chief will come to do his functions there. A politician visits, that's where he goes to. Uh, a, a, an evangelist goes to preach. That's the same open square he goes to. That is Rehoboth. It's an open square. It's a marketplace. It's a public space. It's a place for trading. It's a place where you are able to Take what you have to the market. And when you find yourself in an open space, you can say, I have found my Rehoboth. It's a watered land. It's a land of opportunity. And may the Lord bring you to your open fields and to your open space. I'm here to talk to somebody It would seem as if you have struggled and struggled and struggled and people have fought you and your life has been so tight, so much close marking. But God is bringing you to an open field and in that open field he's making a way for you. And in that open field he's giving you access to the plaza, to the marketplace, to the place where you can take your goods to the market and sell it. Where you have been held back, God is releasing you to the marketplace. Somebody say, I have my open space. 
When God makes a way for us, or when God makes room for us, he gives us two things, access and opportunity. Somebody say access and opportunity. Now, I want you to listen to what Isaac said. Isaac did not say, the Lord has made room for us, therefore we are fruitful. That's not what he said. He said, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful. We shall be fruitful. Rehoboth is not the fruitfulness. Rehoboth gives you the capacity to be fruitful. We shall be is in the future. So Isaac is saying, previously, I didn't have access. I didn't have opportunity, but now God has given me a space where I can be fruitful, where I can showcase what I have, where I can put together the things that are in my heart. You know, many times in the life, in life you find you have so much potential, but no access, no opportunity. You have so much capacity, but you can't find a place to flourish. May the Lord bring you to the place where struggles will cease and fights will cease and opponents will cease and contenders will cease. And this time your wells will remain to produce water for you. Nobody is going to show up fighting. Nobody is going to show up to take your wells from you. Because God is making room for you. Now if you look at what Isaac spoke about, there are two things. First, there is what God does. He makes room for us. How did Isaac know God had made room for him? Because he looked to the left And he looked to the right, and he looked ahead, and he looked backwards, and he sent spies around, and no Philistine could touch this well. Maybe the Philistines looked at this particular well and said, yeah, it's water, but where it is, it cannot produce anything. Maybe they despised it. Maybe they saw the water, but they said, it's not even worth fighting over him for it. I don't know why, but one of these days, God will bring you to a place and nobody will be there to fight. It could be because they think it has no potential. It has no promise. It is nothing. It cannot produce anything. But when God makes room for you, God has made room for you. It may be in a valley. It may be in the lowest part of the valley. It may be in a point where you yourself can't even see anybody around. But God is about to draw the city to you wherever you are instead of you going to the city. I said God is about to draw the city to you instead of you going to the city. Instead of you going to where the people are, the people are about to follow you where you are. In your Rehoboth, God will make you fruitful. So Isaac says, the Lord has made room for me or for us. May God make room for you. And then the second thing is what we do. He says, we will be fruitful in the land. Rehoboth. Is an empty space that God gives you. It is not a planted field. It is just wells of water. And wells of water is not fruit. It is not a flourishing field. It's an empty field. When God makes room for you, you must be careful not to interpret it as you becoming fruitful. It's just an open field. It's like having an irrigated land having an irrigated land does not mean you have a fruitful land it just means that you have a land that can support agriculture so a Rehoboth is opportunity and access when God gives it to you you don't fold your hand and say God has made room for me it is finished Isaac says the Lord has made room for us and we shall We shall. 
it's in the future, but we will work towards it. We will work towards it. We shall be fruitful. So God does something and we do something. God's favor requires man's labor. God's favor requires man's labor. God's favor requires my labor. When God favors me, I must labor. You know, I've heard people say, favor, not labor. I understand why they say that. But that is not the pattern of scripture. It is favor and labor. Because favor is Rehoboth, we shall be fruitful labor. When God favors you, you don't fold your arm. You work like crazy. When God opens a door for you, you don't just sing and rejoice. You run like crazy through the open door. When God gives you access, you don't become lazy. Because many of us, God gives us Rehoboth, but we are not fruitful because we thought the Rehoboth was the fruitfulness. You pray and pray and pray, and God gave you the scholarship to go to school, and then you were crazy not to learn. You pray, God give me the job. He gave you the job, and you were crazy on the job, and you didn't work hard, so you were fired. You had your Rehoboth, but you were not fruitful. God's favor is a Rehoboth. We shall be fruitful is my labor. I have to labor. You have to labor. I must labor. Yeah, as a pastor, I must labor. I must labor in the scriptures. I can't pray and say, God give me a word and not dig the scriptures. I have to labor. In the scriptures. And I have to study. And I have to study like crazy. Because the anointing without labor is frustration. There are many anointed lazy people. They have Rehoboth but they are not fruitful. Because they think Rehoboth is fruitfulness. It's not fruitfulness. God has opened the door but that's not the end. You must run into it. Somebody say, I will labor. I will work with diligence, persistence, perseverance, perspiration. You must sweat. Oh yeah, I don't believe in sweatless victory. I don't see it anywhere in scripture. You must sweat for it. It is sweat equity. You must, by the time you be, you, are, you become successful, you should be panting. <sighs> but thanks be to God that my labor was not in vain. My labor was not in vain because God favored my labor. May God give you Rehoboth. And when he gives you Rehoboth, may you labor like crazy. Work hard to see the victory that he has given to you. So when God gives us a Rehoboth, we must plant on the land. God's presence must be established. The first thing Isaac did when he saw that nobody was contending with him over this well is that he planted an altar. On the land. By planting an altar on the land. He was planting himself. On the land. He is saying. I have now come to stay. Because my God. Has planted me. So he planted an altar. Planted himself. And then planted seed. And when we plant, we must protect what we have planted. Because they may not contend with your water, 
but they may contend with your fruit. You must always be on the lookout for contenders. People who will say, leave him alone. We will wait when he is just about to harvest. We will go and steal his harvest. So don't just plant. Keep watch. Protect what you have planted. So that your Rehoboth will produce fruit for you. I'm going to conclude with a promise that God made to the children of Israel. In Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3 to 5. And this is what God said to them. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. You say, why, why, why did you choose this verse? Because the word that is translated streets is Rehoboth. God says, I'm going to give Jerusalem open spaces. But then he says, the streets will be filled with both old men, old women, boys, and girls. There are two things about this promise of God. First is the promise of a return. God says, I will return. I'm here to declare somebody, there will be a return. There will be a return. There will be a return. Isaac went to Gera to dig the wells of Abraham. The wells of Abraham did not give him water. But God gave him water because sometimes what you expect to give you water may not be that which gives you water because God wants to open something fresh, something new in your life. There will be a return. Somebody say there will be a return. And the second thing is fullness. He says the streets shall be full. Rehoboth is an empty space. But God fills the empty space with substance. May the Lord fill your opportunity. You will not just have opportunity, but you have opportunity that is fulfilled. You will not just have open streets, you have open streets full of people. You will not just have an empty space, but the empty space shall be occupied with the goodness and the favor and the abundance of the Lord. And I speak that over your life this morning by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose you are and whom you serve. You are not in this battle alone. The Lord your God fights for you. They may contend and win some. They may contend and win here and win there. But you are entering a new season. They will not even show up. Because the Lord will make room for you. And for everybody who has been in contention. All these times. And everything you have is taken away from you. I decree a season of open fields for you. Open spaces for you. Access for you. Enter your plaza. Enter your marketplace. Enter your open field. In the name of Jesus. You will return and that which used to be empty will now produce for you. And I decree over your life a season of fullness. Your open spaces shall be full. You will not just be a person of potential, but a person of fulfillment. I decree it over your life by the authority of Jehovah God Almighty. He who opened the door will also fill the place. May the Lord cause your streets to be full of people. May the Lord cause that business to be full. May your shop be full. May your home be full. May your enterprise be full. In the name of Jesus. 
You will not live and die with potential. But you will see fulfillment of potential in your life. And this day may the Lord arise on your behalf. And contend with those who contend against you. May he build a wall of fire around you. They will not go through the fire. Even if they imagine to pursue you, the Lord will hold them back. Because this land is not for them. This season is not for them. This place is not for them. They've done what they could do. But thus far they will go and no further. Because God will make room for me. Just lift up your hands to God in just a minute or two and begin to pray to God and just say, Lord, make room for me. Lord, make room for me. Lord, give me access. Make a way for me. Bring me to my open spaces. Bring me to my open plaza. Bring me to my marketplace, Lord. Make a way for me, Lord. Make a way for me. Take me to a place where I can flourish. Open an opportunity that will flourish. A new idea that will flourish. Just talk to the Lord. 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 Lord. Fresh water. Fresh wells. Fresh open fields. Fresh water. Fresh wells. Fresh open fields are coming to you. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we recognize this season of open fields. You have planted us in a place of fruitfulness. Our Rehoboth has come. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord praise, somebody. What is wrong with you? I said, give the Lord praise. I said, give the Lord praise. He has made room for you. Give him praise. He has made room for you. Give him praise. He has opened a path. He has opened a field. He has opened a field. Fresh wells. Fresh water. 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 Fresh wells, fresh water, in Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Give the Lord praise, somebody. Please be seated in God's presence. Oh, thank you, Lord, that we are in a place of fruitfulness. We are in a big place. We are in a large place, an open field. Favor demands labor. And we will labor in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to take our project's offering. And I just want you to give with a fresh understanding of who God is and what he does for you. The band will minister as we take our project's offering.